This is where that CMPD officer shot and killed Keith Scott, and you can still see the markings on the ground. Mecklenburg County District Attorney Andrew Murray says this case is closed and that CMPD officer Brentley Vincent was justified when he shot and killed Keith Scott. CMPD told us to get off the property because of a bomb threat. This shattered glass is just one example of lots of broken glass we're seeing throughout the city of Charlotte after these violent protests. His first rally since he switched up his campaign staff, the Search warrants show police seized five metal link chains they believe were used on the children, like this one still hanging on a tree. You can actually see the water line here canvassing the area, handing out flyers like this to bring attention to what happened here last night. This is usually floating in water, ruined by flood water, and the threat for more flooding remained here today. I'm surrounded by hundreds of Panthers fans getting excited. The sounds of sweeping glass replaced the hustle and bustle you usually see on a Thursday morning in uptown Charlotte. Boarding up broken windows and doors, shattered glass scattered across town. So I was hoping that we had been spared damage, but that wasn't the case. From police cars to businesses, the damage forced many to close shop for the day. So I'm just out here, just anybody need any help. Uh, got my trash bag with me, got my gloves. So I'm just supporting my city. Man. After the chaos comes the community coming together to help each other clean up. If I can help anyway, just to ease their heartache, that's what I'm going to do. The United Way had to board up its windows and doors this morning, and I found this large rock just sitting below this window that was just boarded up, and you can still see the shattered glass just laying here on the ground. But this is my first time seeing anything at this caliber. Charlotte natives say they've never seen violence or damage like this before. Now city crews cleaning the streets. After tear gas sprayed the city Wednesday during the second night of riots sparked by the officer involved shooting that left Keith Scott dead. But it's not the physical damage that upsets people like David Phillips. It's the reason behind it. There's a lot more to it and I think as a community for us to get beyond this, we have to figure that out and we have to figure it out together. In Charlotte, Lisa Pappas, Time Warner Cable News. Flooding, it's been more than six hours and police are still actively investigating this crime scene behind me where they found three people shot to death and it took all day for family to find out for sure if their loved ones were the victims found inside that home. <laughs> Mothers, fathers, and siblings devastated by the news that their family members were shot to death. Um, I don't know who, rent, uh, who owned the house. I know that my brother, from time to time, he frequented the place. He stayed there sometimes overnight just to get a break from home. Lamar Hood says when he got to the scene, he didn't know if his brother was one of the three killed inside a home on China Grove Church Road. He hadn't been able to reach him. I hadn't heard in over 24 hours. So Dozens of CMPD officers officers worked the crime scene for hours Friday, including CMPD Chief Kerr Putney. The home where three bodies were found is also across the street from a school. Uh, we have not had any calls for service recently here, specifically that address. Uh, there should not be any concern for parents. But the news of a triple homicide shook this quiet neighborhood, drawing support from the nearby church. We haven't had a situation in this community in over 30 years, so for the Sterling community, this is very heartbreaking. Heartbreaking for dozens of people who waited all day to find out their loved ones were really gone. There's stress, grief, just worry. Now, CMPD did not say they're looking for a suspect tied to this triple homicide, but they say if you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 704-334-1600. We're live in Pineville, Lisa Pappas, Time Warner Cable News. Just a few days ago, this neighborhood was underwater, and today it's filled with volunteers in the streets helping to rebuild homes damaged by the flood. Dozens of volunteers from Samaritan's Purse are hard at work. Tearing down walls to help homeowners like Nola Huffman start over. The support and the love has just been, it's, it's been, it's just been so much. It's been, I'm just, we are so grateful. Huffman says her family only had about 20 minutes to escape the flooding Sunday, 
Later that night, her neighborhood was mostly underwater. And sure enough, this guy was riding a boat down through the middle of the, the road here, and you could look over and look at my, my blue tarp. And there it was. She says this street was more like a river, but now that the water is gone, it's time to clean up and rebuild. The damage here is significant. I mean, there's quite a bit of damage here, and, and the flood lines that we're seeing right now are high. You can see the flood line here in Huffman's home. It's about my height, which shows the water was more than five feet high. We're having to take all of the sheetrock out, all of the insulation out. We're taking the, the house back down to the studs, and uh, we'll, we'll even be taking up the hardwood floors. While Samaritan's Purse gets the home ready for reconstruction, Huffman and her daughters are going through what's left. We've been laughing, you know, when we go through all the mementos, and then you cry, and then you just move on and put it in, in the trash and say, okay, I've got more important things. Moving on and thankful her family survived the flood. And Huffman says with the help of volunteers from Samaritan's Purse, she's saving thousands of dollars on rebuilding her home. In Columbia, Lisa Pappas, Time Warner Cable News. I'm Lisa Pappas and this is your Carolina Minute. A man living in Uptown Charlotte returned home last night to find burglars inside his home. More gruesome details after a woman was found chained up in a shipping container. Officials now believe the suspect in this case is responsible for the murders of at least four other Others. Right now, hundreds are gathering for a candlelight vigil for the little girl. That's where we find Time Warner Cable News reporter Kirsten Garris. It's the latest sign that the 2016 presidential election has strayed far beyond the norm. Republican Donald Trump is locked in a heated back and forth with Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Friday, Governor Pat McCrory said the state will appeal to the high court to uphold North Carolina's voter ID law. Officials say one Capitol Hill police officer was shot and the suspected shooter is now in custody. We're told the officer's injuries do not appear to be serious. No other details have been released. Stay with Time Warner Cable News for more details on this developing situation.